In the space of just 30 years, the capital of Albania has gone from being one of the poorest and most secretive cities in Europe to one of the most vibrant, youthful and colourful. It really is an astonishing transformation. So come with me on a tour of Tirana. There'll be pyramids, bunkers, mosques, murals and of course, plenty of cafes. You know, Skanderbeg Square is a wonderful place to see Tirana coming to life in the morning, with cyclists, families, students and commuters all crisscrossing from every angle. It really is the beating heart of this city. To understand Tirana today, you have to understand Albania's history. After centuries of Ottoman rule, the 20th century was particularly traumatic for Albania. It began with the First and Second Balkan Wars, then an invasion from Greece. In the 20s, the repressive regime of King Zog. Italian influence became Italian occupation in 1938, only to be followed quickly by German occupation. The Albanian nationalists and partisans fought each other and the Germans, with the partisans eventually emerging victorious. But this was a short-lived victory, as it ushered in the era of Enver Hoxha, a Stalinist dictator who repressed his people with a brutal form of communism that left even the Soviet Union and China surprised. The country became, in effect, a European version of North Korea. The secret police spied on everybody. There were bunkers all over the country to protect it from potential invasion, and its population were not allowed to leave. But it wasn't until the fall of the Berlin Wall that Albanians rose up and grasped their freedom. In 1992, the communist regime was ousted. However, it hasn't all been plain sailing since the fall of communism. In the late 1990s, the country had to contend with the war in neighbouring Kosovo and also riots following a financial crash. But the country managed to bounce back again. And now, in the 21st century, you only have to spend a small amount of time here in Tirana to know that this city and this nation are really moving forward with confidence. Of course, Enver Hoxha and the party faithful lived in luxury here in the district called The Block. Back then, it was heavily guarded. Nowadays, it's known as the district for nightlife, bars and cafes. He'd have hated that. So what kind of architecture can you find here in Tirana? Well, there are one or two Ottoman relics, like here, at the Tanner's Bridge. Then you can find some grand 1930s Italian pieces, like at Mother Teresa Square. Of course, there's plenty of communist concrete. Some in its original colours, but most of it in post-revolution Technicolor. There's a lot of 1990s and then 21st century cutting edge. There are cranes everywhere. There's so much building going on. And then also the revival of classic Islamic architecture in the shape of the huge new mosque. There's very little Ottoman architecture left in Tirana, so we have to be very grateful for the 18th century mosque of Etim Bey, which stands in the corner of Skanderbeg Square. The interior is adorned with the most intricate frescoes, and this indeed was part of a much larger complex at the time, including a bazaar and also the clock tower, which is the only other part that remains. We're very lucky to have it, because during the brutal regime of Hoxha, he declared Albania to be an atheist state, and many of the mosques were destroyed. Worshipping was, of course, completely outlawed during those times. But thankfully, the mosque is now open again. Tirana's pyramid was designed by the daughter and son-in-law of the dictator Enver Hoxha, and was supposed to be his mausoleum where for decades to come, Albanians would pay their respects. But Hodja forgot that very few dictators are loved after they die. And in fact, very few are loved even whilst they're alive. It's been derelict for many years, but it's great to see that it's finally being redeveloped into a building that the locals can truly be proud of and embrace. 
tell you what, while I go and get a coffee, you go and do some sightseeing. This is probably the coolest cafe in the city. Full on Albanian retro. Enver Hodger didn't just build pillboxes and bunkers all over the countryside. He built them here in Tirana too. Nowadays, it's open as a museum and an art gallery. And I've really been looking forward to exploring it. As you descend further into the bunker, it becomes more heartbreaking, more harrowing, to see how one evil man and his regime kept an entire nation in chains for 45 years. The country was a giant prison. Almost a thousand people died just trying to cross the border and almost nobody could come in. It was the epitome of a hermit kingdom closing in on itself with no friends at all. And then prison camps within the greater prison holding thousands upon thousands of so-called political prisoners, those that weren't executed. If there was ever a work of art that demonstrated why brutal dictatorships must fail, then this is surely it. I'll leave the final word to Mother Teresa herself. Tirana's Museum of Leaves, opposite the Orthodox Cathedral, Sounds like a relaxing incursion into nature, but it's not. It's far more sinister than that. The leaves refer to the millions upon millions of sheets of paper collected by the former secret police, the Sigurimi, on virtually every single member of the Albanian population during the communist regime. The Odo restaurant serves traditional Albanian cuisine in very large portions. I'm going to have to go for a long, long walk. My accommodation here in Tirana is the Sar Hotel, which I highly recommend. Friendly service, centrally located and extremely good value for money. Gananda, Tirana seems to be changing very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. There is there is construction everywhere. Yes, uh, last uh, uh, five or six years, I can say, there has been a lot of changes uh, regarding the, uh, the new flats, the new buildings, regarding uh, new streets. Uh, the new uh, director of government of Tirana, he has made a lot of change uh, with new ideas, the new uh, the new Olympic Park of Tirana. We have new uh, areas where we can go with our families. Do you think the image of Tirana is changing? Are more tourists from abroad now coming? Yes, uh, the number of tourists uh, year by year uh, growing up. So uh, that's uh, very important for us. 80% uh, uh, of uh, economy of Albania, I can say that is uh, uh, by tourism. I've also noticed that most Albanians, like you, speak excellent English. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I think the self-proclaimed Lord of Albania must be very pleased to see how his young nation is now flourishing in the 21st century. That's all from Tirana. It's a city that's exceeded all of my expectations. It's not afraid to look back on its difficult history, but it's really looking forward. Plus, it's got a fantastic cafe culture. Please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next journey.